Alright, I get a lot of requests uh, to go into my manga collection uh, because, you you know, in the videos you'll see the some books back there. I know people are interested. Uh, and I haven't really done like an updated one in a while and uh, I've been reading a lot more manga in the past couple years. I figured I'd go through, kind of talk about what I'm reading right now and what's in my collection of stuff that I've read uh, and enjoyed enough to keep. Because uh, I actually, I go through a, I go through a lot of uh, manga. So, uh, currently at the moment, the two big things I'm going through, I'm, I'm like uh, about halfway done with this. Uh, it is Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which come in these gorgeous, giant uh, cover, you know, uh, it's, it's great, the, you know, absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's by this guy. Heyo Mi 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 Miyazaki? I don't know. I don't know if he's done anything. Nausicaa has been very enjoyable so far. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. I need to refresh myself on the movie. Uh, but uh, the manga has been very good. And I've been enjoying it more than I remember enjoying the movie. Uh, I think with this, it's a very, very fully realized world. And I was saying this to uh, uh, a friend the other day. But basically it's like, you know... Miyazaki's a very good storyteller when it comes to having a rich world, but not, like, uh, just hitting you over the head with, like, the lore. Like, let me tell you exactly how the lore is. Just showing how the different tribes and races of people interact with each other. Just, you can figure out a lot of stuff from context, uh, which is nice. So, uh, absolutely, you know, gorgeous art. Uh, really strong female lead and an also another awesome female character uh, Princess Kushana who's like this uh, like uh, warrior uh, not villain like ambiguous ally villain sort of character yeah great great strong female characters really uh, kind of haunting like moments in this as well that I don't remember from the manga <laughs> beautifully written and drawn uh, criticism of war and lavishly detailed in both art and and uh, world building. So it's great. Again, hope that Mio Mi Mi Miyazoko. Hope he does something else. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, I'm also going through uh, Akira. Uh, I have I only very recently watched Akira for the first time. Surprisingly, like uh, last year, I think, and. Uh, uh, my friend Dave recommended uh, the manga uh, to kind of like, kind of maybe similar to like Nasuka, like kind of flesh out, you know, what Katsuhiro Otomo was going for, right? Because the movies can be a little abstract here and there, but I think with Akira, it's it's fun, like um, it's it's very impressive. I mean, just on a technical scale, like the the, the art and everything. But uh, so far, it's just been a fun. Uh, sci-fi action romp um, definitely different from the movies so far or movies movies so far but still enjoyable and also this nice big uh, these big books as well and then I'm also going through Berserk uh, for the first time uh, was, these are the deluxe editions which I actually don't like these that they have these just they, they all look like this just like big black covers they look like evil bibles like I don't I want to see, like, the cover art. I don't know if I'm going to keep these. Uh, I mean, I'm just reading through them because I want to experience Berserk, which is good. Like, I, I, I totally get it. I actually really hated the first three volumes of it. Not the first three big volumes, but I think the first, like, book. Because it felt just very irritating and just grim to be grim. And then it hits a certain period, which I know a lot of you Berserk fans are familiar with. It's It almost feels like, oh, this is what this author was trying to tell. Like, basically, it's... It's, uh, it is still very gory, and, uh, I would not recommend Berserk to, uh, the faint of heart. It's very graphic in a lot of ways, not just violence. Um, there's, uh, you know, uh, a lot of very shocking imagery in it, uh, of all sorts. It's, it's very disturbing, but at its core, I think there is a, a mature, interesting story being told, and a character, a character that at, at first glance seems just like a grim dark edgelord but is actually a pretty nuanced and, and empathetic character uh, I always describe it as like if Zoro from One Piece had like 10 times the trauma uh, but still was Zoro like it, it's 
I there there sometimes there are things where that make me go. You don't need to like. Uh, I'll, there there's a manga I'll talk about later that I think, a pro like does mature stuff but not nearly as like. Ha ha! Get it? It's grotesque. It's it's get it? Horrible things happen. I mean, but with that said, the art in it pretty stunning, and uh, yeah no it, it there's nothing really like it. Like it has influenced clearly a lot of manga, uh, and I get it. I, I get the value of Berserk, and I'm still going to absolutely keep reading it uh, as they release these. I just wish this wasn't these fucking dumb black... Like, it just looks so stupid. I hate that. So those are the three series I'm, like, sort of making my way through. Uh, although some of these will also be ones I'm ongoing, but I have most of them. So I'm just going to show you, like, the first volumes. 20th Century Boys by Naoki Urasawa. Um, I love 20th Century Boys. It's a long... Uh, epic about, uh, uh, you know, I shouldn't say too much, but basically what happens is there's a guy working at a convenience store, he was a failed musician, uh, and suddenly this image from his past comes up, from his childhood, and a slow conspiracy starts to unfold of terrifying scope. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a nice kind of mystery, sort of like, adventure that spans a huge scale um it's one of those that it's, it's just best to jump into blind just just go in with that premise uh and and discover this for yourself it's it's wild it's urasawa who's one of my, my if not my favorite mangaka one of my favorite mangaka uh absolutely highly recommend it after the rain uh is um pretty pretty iffy premise right it's about a high school girl who falls in love with a older man uh who is the manager of a restaurant it's interesting because there's a very tricky thing there right it, uh like this is a series that could easily be uh quite frankly gross like disgusting uh but it's not uh, I think the topic that it tackles is interesting, and it handles this topic with maturity and nuance, and it is really quite well written. Like, uh, it's not what it appears to be on the cover in terms of like, oh, like people might hear that concept, oh, it's going to be some some trashy. Like, there, I know there are other shows and stuff with that concept, um, but this is a very subtle, very uh, well told tale about just kind of like. Adolescence. It's like adolescence, and uh, I think uh, a big reason why this one works is that uh, the the older man does not is not like uh, oh yeah that's great a high school girl likes me. It's like no no it's he is very much like no 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 like that I am I am way too old for you that sort of thing, and then it's it sort of exp goes down like a very interesting journey about like character like the characters themselves. Um, so, trust me, I know I know it's got a skeezy sounding premise, but it's great, the art's great, you'll just have to trust me on this one. People who know my tastes know I have a lot of low tolerance for, like, anime bullshit, uh, but this one is, is, is very good. Asadora is a new one, uh, it's a, it's Urasawa's latest work, um, and this one's giving me 20th Century Boys vibes, like, so far, without going into too much detail, it's about the life of this girl Asa. Asa? Asa? I think it's Asa. And I won't say anything because this first volume gets pretty wild, but shit happens and it just starts building. Like, it's... Uh, there's only, I think, two volumes I've read so far because those are the only ones released. Even after one volume, I was like, oh man, I can't wait to see where this goes. Similar vibe to this in that it, it's starting... Well, this one didn't start in childhood, but it's starting in childhood and there's going to be, like, a pretty uh, wild story being told here so I'm excited to see where this goes uh, so far it, it's it's uh, been very good though Azumanga Daio is a classic I still have the <laughs> what is the ADV manga version I, mean, I know there's a yen press but I just I don't know I have this one I still think this is a phenomenally funny manga uh, I don't think the anime has aged well at all I used to love the anime I think it's pretty bad now this is the definitive version this the four coma that's the way to go it, it is still gut-burstingly funny. There's also stuff in here that is not in the show, 
Uh, I would say even if you like Azumanga Daya the anime, check out the check out the manga. There's a lot in here that's not in there, and it's also way better. BL Metamorphosis. This is a newer series I've been getting into, which is very sweet. It's about uh, uh, an older woman who uh, discovers BL manga or boys love manga, and this high school girl who is already a boys love manga fan, and they become friends. Like they just become it's a like an uh, sort of what do you call it? like. Uh, unexpected friendship, you know, between uh, age generation uh, generations, um, and it's really sweet. Like, uh, I have I have a really soft spot for stories about old people. They make me really sad and like sen like sentimental. This is no exception. They absolutely took at your heartstrings. Uh, she is a widow, of course, uh, to because they hate me. Uh, so it's like they're gonna maybe they want to make me sad. Uh, but yeah, it's. Really, really sweet so far. Uh, I'm enjoying this one quite a bit. Blue Flag. This is one I've been enjoying a lot lately. Basically how this works, I don't want to go too much into detail about this. Love Triangle is not even maybe the right description. There's there's a lot going on. Uh, just, just imagine a lot of entanglements in a love polyhedron of sorts. Um, it, it, it's, but it's not a comedy. It is, it is a drama. Uh, it is about these high school students navigating, uh, some pretty tough stuff. Like, some pretty, like, pretty both relatable and serious issues. Uh, and, uh, yeah, navigating just the messiness of those emotions and maybe emotions for each other. It's quite gripping. Like, every time a new volume of these comes, I just devour it in a sitting. Like, it's well written, the characters are uh, really well fleshed out and, like, sympathetic, even if you don't always agree with their actions. And there's always cliffhangers of, like, uh, real emotional, like, a stake. It always feels grounded. Like, they, they, there's really mature, interesting conversations that these, kind of, that these characters have. And I don't want to go into details about the plot, but yeah, anyway. It's it's really great. Uh, I believe I'm about to read the last volume when that comes out, and I'm excited. Uh, I I think that's the last volume, and I can't wait to see how it all goes because this one has been a, a, a great ride so far. A Bride Story is wonderful. Uh, this is about uh, the life of not only one bride but several different brides in uh, during like the sort of Silk Road era, the uh, in Central Asia. Uh, 19th century uh, history by the same mangaka as Emma, which I haven't read, but I know she's a huge fan of his historical research. There's fun afterwards she has where she talks about, like, she actually visited con these countries and, like, you know, talked to local people and stuff, and, like, it it's great. So basically, um, it's like a slice of life historical manga. It goes through, like, the lives of different characters. It'll hop around to different. Uh, ones, but they also connect. Uh, some of them know each other, uh, and there's like a main family, and yeah, it's it's great. As is the, is the historical manga, uh, the main family there is like a uh, the the there's a young like I think he's like 14 or something something like that. He's a young uh, husband to the much older. She's like 20 or something, uh, a bride. But that subject matter is still treated very like. Uh, respectfully, there's nothing. It's not like gross or weird or anything. Like so, you know. Just but just a heads up for people who are sensitive to that sort of thing. Very matter of fact. Very just uh, uh, not in a weird way. Just historical way. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend this. Uh, every one of these volumes has been a treat. The art is gorgeous, uh, and I love Slice of Life. It's very. It's one of my. It's probably my favorite genre. And this is like peak slice of life but interesting historical detail and also there's some good storytelling like there's like you know uh, there are things that happen as well as the series goes on um, that like affect the family and yeah it's great next up is delicious and dungeon adventuring party going into a dungeon uh, but they don't have any money so they have to cook the monsters they encounter and make recipes out of them uh, it's I love that concept that's what sold me on it but what is really interesting is there is actually a lot of stakes and lore involved in this as well. Like, it starts off as kind of like a comedic, just, oh, it's just, haha, we're just 
eating monsters and it still maintains that sense of fun throughout but it starts to add like different characters and uh repercussions and it, yeah it, it, so there, there is like an actual uh story going on as well it, it can have both it can have its uh a comedy and uh drama and comedy and eat it eat the monster too i don't know what i'm saying anyway really great highly recommended i mean if you just like that concept uh check that one out any ale and duella any al and dewey duella i don't know this is a really cute fun manga by uh kumome shirahama which i believe she, uh not i believe i know she did uh which had atelier which spoiler that's coming up later but this is a very cute manga about like uh uh, they are like one's an angel, one's a, a devil, and they are like fashion designers, uh, and they uh, they're involving and like you know they involve all the different angels and demons of heaven and hell. Uh, it's goofy. There's like it's like you know at least so far episodic and like there's just like, each one is kind of like its own vignette. Um, dealing with like they're trying to like compete to like get people's souls the art's wonderful and they're but it's just watching two two fun hot ladies having fun trying to like get souls and i mean here's a sense of just how goofy the the other characters can be if the art weren't as good as it was i don't know if i would keep this but because the art is so good and it's really funny. Uh, she's actually a very funny writer. That 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 is what has drawn me to this. Is not only is the art great, but it's very funny and charming. Here's an obscure one, Full Metal Alchemist. You might have heard of it. Uh, I won't go into too much detail because it's you know everyone knows it. Still one of my favorite manga of all time. I think the best shonen manga of all time. Yes, uh, I think it's extremely well told. Great characters. Uh, and if you have not read it, read it. If you've only seen the 2003 anime, that anime sucks. If you've watched Brotherhood, that's fine. I think the manga is better though. Oh boy, here. Oh, here's some dear to my heart Genshiken. I have the omnibuses of these. This is like peak, just what it's actually like to see a bunch of otaku in a club. Like I never, I've never been in an anime club in my life, um, but I can get the sense that this is pretty accurate because it does not show them in a good light necessarily just a very frank light uh which i really enjoy but there's a fun dynamic where saki uh is the girlfriend of one of the otaku who's a really good looking otaku uh and her it's just her discovering this this just grimy group of otaku uh and getting into their culture and uh just discovering this world unabashedly uh, nerdy, but also very sweet. I think it's a very sweet manga, and there's like romance here and there, and uh, some even some love triangles, and and uh, just a good. There's a it's it's got it's a warm slice of life, you know, camaraderie feeling of enjoying these characters going around, being with each other, and also just making fun of otaku. But then I also have, which is a very different feel, but I still enjoy the second season. Where uh, it's the the main it's the almost like the what the shippuden where the old the most of them have graduated and the Genshin Club is primarily female members. This one turns into almost like parody and yet not parody of a harem manga, which I don't like harem stuff at all. But it I don't know it has some of the characters from the original. Well, actually, most of them show up um, in in some capacity. And it's a very different feel. It's a little more plot driven than the other season. Still really fun, and I, I'm glad I have all of it. I, I honestly wasn't interested in this because I thought it sounded kind of trashy. But then I read it, and I was like, this is fun. At, at its core, it's just fun to read. It is actually, it's just a fun read. So, um, I, I both of these are pretty dear to my heart. This is a series I may not keep long run, not because I don't like it, but it I hear I mean it, it's long and there's an anime that I hear is good, so I may switch, even though I do enjoy the manga. But Golden Kamui, I'm I've been enjoying this. I'm about maybe eight volumes in, but I don't know if I, I can justify the shelf space. But uh, it's it's fun. It's uh, it's about a bunch of uh, well, it's a lot of characters, but a bunch of like soldiers in the. Uh, the 20th century 
Uh, they're going for like a treasure map or like a treasure map made of oh boy like tattoos on people's prisoners bodies and they're trying to find it's fucking wild but what i like about it there's a an, an ainu girl ainu is like a uh, a group of uh, people uh named the serpa and basically it it's almost like a weird slice of like cooking manga on the side because they're always like how to cook different animals in the Ainu style and it, it's it's really interesting like that to me is the charm of it of like watching them eat things I'll probably not get to eat and uh, also the, their reactions to it there's a lot of funny facial expressions so it's a very very short one but great uh, Yonan Mu Junji Ito's cat diary Yonan Mu if you know, don't know Junji Ito uh, an incredible horror mangaka, autobiographical uh, manga about his cats, uh, and it's like imagine just cute cat stories about his cats, but drawn like this. It's hilarious. If you have a cat, I think this is a must buy. I have died laughing just reading this. He is so funny, and I would love to see him do more comedy stuff. Uh, Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun. Uh, I've talked about my love for the anime. Uh, this is a four coma, so uh, I think it actually might work pretty well, like work better. And what I like about the manga is uh, it covers a lot of stuff with side characters that the anime doesn't. There's like all these other characters, like sub siblings and co-workers and other characters that you don't get to see much, if any. It goes past the anime as well, uh, and there's a lot more fun characters that aren't involved. But if you're not familiar with the concept, basically a uh, high school girl uh, has a crush on this guy, uh, confesses to him, he's an idiot, he mistakes it for, because uh, he's secretly a shoujo mangaka, he sort of enlists her as his assistant in making shoujo girls manga. Uh, it's a comedy. It's, it's a lot of fun. If you like the anime, I would recommend the manga just to get even more of it. Meizou Nikoku! Oh man, I loved this anime. I watched all of it way back in the day. And I am revisiting it now in these very nice uh, new printings of the manga. Um, this is like peak slice of life romantic comedy. I love this. This is like comfort food for me. Uh, Kyoko Otonashi, who is an apartment manager, she's a widow, and it's a lieutenant named Godai, who's this just dunce, but he's basically trying to like, you know, become a, a better, a good enough man to impress her. And there's like. A lot of like, ooh, romantic tension, like, ooh, will they, won't they. It's so good. I love this with all my heart. I, it's just like eating your favorite, like, cereal, like, in a warm blanket. Like, I love this. It's my, this is my shit. Muji Rushi is a one shot manga by Urasawa. Again, I will, I will just uh, eat up anything Urasawa. Basically, about like, it's like a heist manga involving the Louvre. Uh, the Louvre, the Louvre, I don't know exactly how to say it. Urasawa got special permission to look in never seen by the public parts of the Louvre for this, and you can see why in this. Uh, it's just like a, it's a fun heist mystery involving a painting and a family, and uh, it also has a character from uh, just this guy. Like, it's, I would love to see Urasawa do more like fun stuff like this where it's like a one-shot adaptations involving ca classic characters that's such an interesting existence this manga my brother's husband uh i think this is great it's about a uh a man and his daughter who um uh, his twin brother uh, uh passed away and then his twin brother's husband from canada comes to visit unexpectedly extremely sweet and also, it's it's this very emotional tale because you know, like Mike has this attachment to uh, uh, this family that, and they're meeting him for the first time. And uh, it's just, meanwhile, uh, the main character has to uh, Yaichi. He has to deal with. He's very rigid on his views of like uh, homosexuality, and it's him like not only coming to accept and appreciate his his uh, brother's uh, husband. Um, but also just learning to just, you know, uh, be more of an um, uh, accepting person uh, uh, through his brother's husband's kindness. It's 
great. It's by uh, a very prolific uh, gay mangaka, normally known for, from what I've been told, hardcore, like, bara, like, gay manga. Uh, and so, uh, but this is very family friendly, very sweet. I really o I've underestimated how much manga I have. But hey, this will be an exhaustive, comprehensive recommendation video. Here's another one I may not keep in the long run, but One Punch Man, this is also like the one of the special covers. Um, everyone knows One Punch Man. Art is amazing. I haven't seen the anime past season one, but that sort of point, it starts to meander, I think. And I just kind of get them as like, I like seeing Yusuke Murata's new art book. Because <laughs> that's kind of how they feel. It's like, okay, it's like a fight, and you get to see a pretty pictures. I mean, pretty pictures. Gorgeous illustrations, honestly. Our Dreams at Dusk. Uh, this is a really wonderful manga about... Uh, the main character is a high school uh, boy who is outed as gay, and he uh, uh, contemplates uh, uh, suicide, uh, but then he is uh, sort of rescued by uh, this mysterious person who brings him to a community of LGBT plus uh, characters, and from all different sort of like uh, orientations and backgrounds and they are just like it just shows him like that he's not the only one and that he starts to accept not only himself but like uh, learn about the others and it's really really good it's very emotional uh, pretty tough subject matter but it treats its characters with just absolute respect and is very compatible I believe the I believe the manga is non-binary um, but yeah highly recommended it. it's 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 uh, just great. I, I I was very swept up emotionally reading this one. Pluto, another Urasawa. I love Urasawa. Um, this is an adaptation of uh, the Pluto, the strongest, ro the greatest robot on Earth, and Astro Boy arc. So imagine Urasawa um, with just like do it's a it's a psychological murder uh, mystery of this of robots being murdered um and this is a robot detective gesicht who is trying to solve the case uh with the only time i think uh tezuka productions has like um given their permission to a mangaka that's because arosa is that's good is that good it's not that long it's a great sci-fi mystery really chilling really sad really full of emotion it's great Silver Spoon, it's a masterpiece. Uh, same, uh, same mangaka as Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, high school boy uh, goes to a farm school on a whim and learns about farming. Um, it is hilarious. It is heartwarming. He begins to love farming and appreciate it and makes such good friends. And it's just him trying to discover what he wants to be and wanting to help his friends achieve their dreams. Arakawa was a uh, lived on a farm, so there's a ton of insight into how farms work. Inspiring, it's wonderful, heartwarming. Again, I cannot recommend this one more. It's especially if you want only watch the anime, finish the manga. It finishes on such a great note. Sneeze is a Naoki Urasawa story collection of mixed quality, but it's just good. Like it, uh, there's I, there's no way I couldn't own this. Now, some of you may be asking, why don't you own Monster? It's because I actually watched Monster. I've read and watched Monster, but I have not read Monster in physical form. I may buy Monster at some point, but at this point, I I have the anime, so it's like, I don't know, I don't really need to. Solanin, um, this is a uh, very uh, emotional, raw tale. I don't want to go into too much detail, but um, it's just about... It's about, oh, just read this one. Uh, Inio Asano, it was, you know, one of his first big hits. And I read Poon Poon. I appreciate Poon Poon. I didn't like it enough to keep it. Solonin is more my style. There's optimism in this, even though uh, there is tragedy. Whereas Poon Poon is a little harder to swallow. But uh, yeah, highly recommended. Solonin. Sweetness and Lightning. Um, I think the manga is better than the anime. Uh, it's about a single dad uh, raising his daughter, and he's bad at cooking, so he starts to learn cooking uh, with the help of a high school girl uh, who is one of his students, and they cook together. Really, really cute, really sweet. Um, 
makes you hungry, and also makes you a little sad, and makes your heart warm. It's, it's got all my favorite things. Vagabond, oh man, they come in these giant uh, omnibuses. Uh, this is about the life of Miyamoto Musashi, uh, and it is some of the rawest action sequences I've ever seen. Uh, the art is incredible. It's just stunningly good. Like, uh, I am the amount of detail, the amount of heart in this. Each volume is like stunning. It's like its own. You just get sucked into these characters and into these intense moments. One of these can be like a fight, and I say that in a good way. Vinland Saga, I think, is fantastic. The anime is also good. Manga is better. Uh, this is about, it's another historical manga uh, about a character uh, named Thorfinn, who, um, he, uh, Vikings murder his, uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Okay, they mur- they, uh, they murder his dad. Uh, that, 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 whatever. They, you'll, it's like, pretty early on. And so he seeks revenge against uh, the Vikings leader. Epic historical tale of his sort of, like, growth. Um, and it's... Fantastic. The characters in this are some of the most well-written, interesting characters I've, I've read about in a manga. Detail is on par with like a bride story with the historical detail. And, and there's some twists in here that are just stunning. Like classic Game of Thrones, those feelings, this book or this series gave that to me. Just go into it, enjoy it, and discover this journey for yourself. Which Hat Atelier, I mentioned before, Atelier, Atelier, whatever. Uh, same mangaka as Eniali and Duella. Um, this is a really sweet, really gorgeously illustrated, but also very sweet manga about witches uh, learning, or learning to be a witch. Although, Coco here, well, there's a whole backstory to her. You'll read it when you read it. But what's also, not only is it cute, uh, the art is great and it's, you know, charming, but the, the magic system in this is really cool. It's really well thought out and interesting and it makes sense. Fun characters and really good world building that's subtle. Uh, I, I, it's just pure joy. It's like, if you want something that gives you the same kind of feelings as like Harry Potter before that all bullshit went that way and uh, is actually kind of way more well thought out <laughs> than Harry Potter, this. Easy. Which had to tell you. With the Light Raising Autistic Child, I think is the one people have read the least in my collection, but it is very dear to my heart. Um, it's uh, a very uh, sweet, empathetic story about uh, a mother uh, and her raising her autistic son. Uh, she has no experience uh, uh, with autism, um, but it's her uh, learning about it and deciding to, you know, uh, love her son and raise him. Um, and it goes, th and uh, so for uh, I have a, an a autistic brother, and so for me this holds a very uh, dear place in my heart of like I I can see my mom in in, in this in the main character, uh, like her not only her you know empathy and her you know in raising in raising my brother, but also uh, the challenges she had to face because especially during this time period uh, when the manga was released, uh, there is a lot of not wanting to talk about autism in Japanese society and there's very no like people don't understand and so it's her just um, like teaching people about autism and uh, it sounds like it's like educational it's not it's a it's just a really good story love this manga unfortunately uh, the mangaka passed away before she could finish I have all of it uh, but I still think it's worth reading all of it it's really really good uh, and um, yeah, I, I very very dear to my heart. I think this is the one that I know I don't know anyone who's read this, but I love it. And finally, my favorite manga, Yotsuba and Yotsuba. I just love Yotsuba. I describe this as like Japanese Calvin and Hobbes. It's about a young girl named Yotsuba doing fun stuff. She's she's the adopted daughter of a single dad, and she just it's hilarious. Like one of the funniest manga I've read. One of the sweetest manga I've read, and all the characters are endearing. It's just charming. It's just Yotsuba having fun. That's it, but it does it superbly. Again, Hiyohiko Azuma is a comedic genius. No exception. I, this is still my favorite. Whew! That was everything. That was all the manga I own. 
I'm sure you got at least one recommendation out of that you haven't heard of. And if not, I'm impressed if you've read every single one. Uh, otherwise, that's it for this one. Yeah, there are other manga I've read, of course. But they're not. I either don't own them or whatever. This was my collection for the most part. All right. Bleep.